Hey teachers, welcome to our new episode of Teach and Talk. My name is Laisa and I am accompanied by Gloria and Jonathan today. Through this talk, we're going to discuss the concepts and management of large and multi-level classes, added to some of the possible well-known and documented strategies aimed to properly set and achieve your teaching goals. But first things first, you will be provided with a concept to both large and multi-level classes separately, their advantages and potential problems according to researchers, and only then how to manage these two environments when put together, since most large classes will contain multi-level students. Gloria, shall we start with you? What can you tell us about the concept of large classes? Is there a single definition for it? What makes one? There is no global definition of what constitutes a large class. The literature, for example, shows large classes as ranging between 25 to 30 learners in the United Kingdom, more than 35 learners in the US and 60 or more learners in developing countries. That's interesting. What about the advantages of teaching large classes? What are they? There are many advantages, but I will cite only three for you. The first provides more opportunities for co-students interaction. The second fosters an atmosphere of cooperation. The third encourages creativity and innovation. Sounds encouraging. But tell me, Gloria, what assumptions can we make about dealing with these classes? The challenges are mostly caused by pedagogical or management-related problems, such as if the strength of the class is more difficult to monitor the learning process. It is difficult for the teacher to make contact with the students at the back. And it's difficult for the students to ask for and receive individual attention. It may seem impossible to organize dynamic and creative teaching and learning sessions. Big classes mean that it's not easy to have students walking around or changing pairs. And, most important, big classes can be quite intimidating for inexperienced teachers. Oh, it seems a lot to handle. What about the problems that can be faced by the teachers? Can you mention some of them? Of course, Laisa. I will tell you, the first is to maintain discipline in the class. The second to satisfy all the needs of students who have different interests, personalities, and capabilities. The third, to organize efficient class activities due to constraints of time and space. The fourth, to provide equal chances for the students to participate and practice. And the last but not least, to give timely and effective feedback. And evaluation. Thank you, Gloria. Jonathan, when it comes to multi-level classes, what exactly are they? A group of students who learn and study together in one room, despite having varying levels of abilities and or literacy backgrounds. Things to consider. The student's educational background in his or her first language. The cultural expectations each student has regarding the role of the teacher, the student's personality, goals, age, and learning style, the student's access to English outside the ESL classroom. And how can we classify the levels of proficiency in a multi-level class? Below level, at level, and above level. Below level students are at risk because they often become frustrated and blame themselves for their inability to learn more efficiently. At level students are doing well with their current level of instruction and are progressing as they should. Above level students are also at risk because these students can become frustrated 
with the teacher for not providing more Chaji lessons. Can you do the same as Gloria did? Can you mention some advantages of dealing with a multi-level class? Students are able to learn at their own pace. Students learn to work well in a group. Students become independent learners. Students develop strong relationships with their peers. Students become partners in learning. What about the challenges of handling a multi-level class? I'm sure there are many. Certainly, like finding appropriate teaching resources and material, organizing appropriate groupings within the class, building an effective self-access center in the classroom, determining the individual needs of each student, ensuring that all students are challenged and interested, enforcing English-only policies when teacher is occupied and the students are working in small groups or pairs. Jonathan, Gloria, thank you both for your contributions. They were really clarifying explanations. Taking all that information into consideration, we can tell you, teacher, that dealing with large and multi-level classes won't be such an easy job. But you can make the best out of it if you have knowledge and wisdom. Bringing together everything Gloria and Jonathan mentioned, here go some tips on how to handle large and multi-level classes at its best. Personalize your classes. Begin the lesson with the whole class together. End the lesson with the whole class together. Assign level tasks using a variety of groupings. Level the four skills activities and the conversations. Promote active learning, promote class participation, and try alternative teaching methods. Did you enjoy it? Was it useful? We hope it was. Thank you very much, everybody. This was Teach and Talk.